So I had an awesome question from one of our Thrive team, which I'm actually gonna post below in the comments. So you can go read the question first and then watch my response. And I decided to do it in video format because there's actually quite a lot of variables that go into this. So first of all, leaking, wetting yourself, whatever it is, whether it's getting up off the sofa or doing a CrossFit workout, it's not normal. Okay, yes, it's common, but it's not normal and it shouldn't be happening. Grown women should not be wetting themselves. So first of all, we need to get that across to the client because essentially it's kind of been normalized. So um, the question at, mentions bouncing. Now this is something that we cover in both grow and thrive and it's fascial bouncing. Basically you're standing up and you're bouncing up and down, which if you have got bladder issues and leaking is probably not the best idea to start there. So the question is absolutely right in its wording. Should I maybe downgrade that a little bit and work on other things until we get more control of the bladder? Absolutely. What you want to do is you want a, bl a bladder issue or a pelvic floor issue is mostly because the muscles around the pelvic floor are not in flux. And by that, I mean they're either gripping too tight or they've just completely let go. There's no, they're at either end of the spectrum and there's no in between. We want them to be somewhere in between and to be reactive um, to what we do and almost anticipatory in uh, towards what we do. So we want them to modulate no matter what we're doing in life, whether we're doing a CrossFit workout, whether we're getting up off the couch. So we need to train them to be able to anticipate these movements and be ready for it so that leaking doesn't occur. So I would say that we need to focus on ankle mobility. We need to focus on hip stability. So any training on one leg. We also need to focus on the position of the femur, whether it's internally rotated, externally rotated, because the position of the femur helps to tension the pelvic floor muscles and the hip, and the hip musculature, the appropriate amount for movement, rather than our standing parallel and just gripping in a really, really dysfunctional way. The other thing we need to mention and that I've said many, many times on here before is that the more we focus on it, the more dysfunctional it becomes. So one of the last things you want to be doing is cueing lift up on your pelvic floor. That's just going to be adding to that excess grippiness of the muscles and making them even more dysfunctional than they already are. Um, we, one of the other things is that we could be doing bouncing, but in a supine position with the ball behind the leg, for example, and bouncing the, on the ball, the fascial bouncing, if you may not know what I'm talking about with this one, but those of you that have joined us in Grow and Thrive will know exactly what I'm talking about. So supine leg fascial bouncing, um, working between um, internal rotation and external rotation as you go and trying to hydrate that fascia so that that then works up into that pelvic floor area. The one thing we have to say here is stop stretching. So this question that was asked was relating to female runners. I may be generalizing here, but female runners typically stretch and they stretch pretty aggressively to end range, often passively. This has to stop. This is a non-negotiable. Cold turkey, this has to stop. By stretching that living tissue, you are taking it to that end range where it just lets go. And if we're stretching the hips, which is common with runners, then we're stretching the pelvic floor musculature as well. You can't isolate muscles, whether you're working them or whether you're stretching them. So stop stretching them because often it will be the hip flexors, which we know supports the lumbar spine, which we know fascially blends into the pelvic floor musculature. So stop stretching. And then the final point I have on this question that I think needs to be included is there's a massive psychological and emotional effect that works into, uh, sorry, effect, I mean variable, that works into um, stress incontinence. So that needs to be addressed as well. We need to take this 360 approach and it's not just us as instructors and fitness professionals and therapists that can help the client. It's actually sometimes a psychologist as well or a counselor or someone that can talk to them about potential trauma that's gone in, gone on in that area. Um, it might be a traumatic birth. 
it might be something else going on but we're not often equipped to deal with that so it might take someone else joining you as part of your treatment team on that one i hope that was helpful if you want to know more about the pelvic floor then this friday coming i am running a training the pelvic floor workshop um i say it's for instructors but i actually have plenty of very interested clients on that as well um all are welcome if you can't make the live then we will be giving the recording for 40 uh no 72 hours afterwards i decided to be kind shocker um it is at uh, 9 a.m uh uk time which is 12 noon golf standard time it's two hours certificates are given so you can register for your cpd points and it's this friday the link is in the bio to join i look forward to seeing you there